Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we are going to try the Venus mission again. Uh, we will try once again to send a probe into the atmosphere of Venus and hopefully get some surface science, but we will see. Uh, but I've made some changes, obviously. First of all, I've added some extra antennae on the probe itself and then also fixed the electric charge issue on the photon interplanetary stage so that it uh, isn't interfered with by uh, KSP Interstellar. Uh, that is a patch to KSP Interstellar that will be included in RP2000 in future versions. So it's just uh, editing a file called solarpanels.config which uh, changed everything that has solar panels and all I had to do was add a little caveat that okay you can change all the solar panels but not the ones that already have electric charge and in this case the photon interplanetary stage has the solar panels built in but it has electric charge and all sorts of other stuff as well like RCS so don't change those is all I told it and otherwise I have decided to add more Delta V by adding more boosters <laughs> also uh, instead of having a wide first stage we have narrowed the first stage so that these are identical so it is basically a heavy version I don't like heavy versions but this had the attendant benefit of meaning that these boosters would be useful for our crewed launch vehicle, the Lynx spacecraft launch vehicle. And that's because the Lynx already has these SE 2060 engines on it, it has four. And so we can add boosters, these boosters to it, and these will use the same engines, and it'll be more convenient that way. So we, we are using all the same engines on both systems. So this is probably a set system for the smaller launches, and then the Lynx one will be for the bigger launches. This is basically our Thor rocket, I suppose. And uh, we also do use the Engine 2 vacuum on both rockets. So in this case, we use one. In the case of the Lynx spacecraft rocket, we use two. I just, I'll just i just call that the Lynx rocket. So anyway, we have made some changes. We have Ceptrons that are actually the model rocket motors, the O25,000s. So anyway... Let's try this. We'll build this one. And we are still waiting for advanced construction in order to get the docking ports for the docking mission, which is what the Link spacecraft will next launch in order to do. So, okay, we have added this to the build list, and we'll wait the 81 days it takes to build it. Actually, we will wait more than 81 days because we do have to wait for the actual window to Venus, warp to complete there. Maybe we should have a backup one as well. Yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll build a backup one, and maybe I'll start building the launch vehicle for the Lynx mission. So, in prepping the new Lynx launch, I guess we can edit this recovered Lynx and see how that works out for us. So, this was the recovered Lynx. I don't know if the parachutes are safe. Um, I'm gonna just for safety's sake replace those. Now we won't have the docking port yet. So we won't put the launch escape system yet either. We are going to put the launcher, which includes the service module. And that's going to take 368 days as it is. Yep. 380 now with those fairings, but this now has four boosters on it. Probably too much Delta V, to be honest. Assuming it's reading it right. Maybe we can do with two boosters. And for the purposes of docking, I also wanted to add extra RCS ports on top. So there will also be a docking target, and that will be separate. Wow, the arrow cap takes how long? It takes it looks like it takes 29 days to manufacture the aero cap in addition to everything else. I mean, it's important, obviously. You definitely, definitely want it to separate off, but maybe, maybe I can price that a little bit lower. At the time it takes depends on the price, of course, so. Okay, well, I haven't decided to paint this body yet. The boosters are painted as is. Same boosters as we have on the other launch. Not that that makes a difference since we don't recover them. 
but in principle. All right. So this I'm gonna say I won't save the craft because it's only halfway. It doesn't have the launch escape system because we'll put that on after we put the docking port. Let's save edits. Okay, so now we have two of those probes ready, and advanced construction is completing. Not a whole lot we can unlock right now with 64.8 science. Of course, we might need this flight control in order to get landing stuff. Well, the bigger heat shields, anyway. So, we seem to already have... Well, the Lynx heat shield comes with Lynx spacecraft. The same tier, just different technology. The little lander cans... are nice. Um, but yeah, I certainly want these larger RCS blocks in the lander cans, so we'll get flight control. Okay, so we are two days to the Venus window according to Kerbal Alarm Clock, and it looks good enough to me eyeballing it. So let's roll it out and see about the, hopefully, the only launch to Venus, but if we need to, we have the backup. Okay, it looks like a daylight launch to me. Bottle up, SAS on, ignition. Ah, we lost one. Okay, shut down. I, I don't even know which one of you is the bad one. Okay, that booster. Okay. Well, we've got three ignitions. Uh, maybe we can recycle and try again. Uh, let's see. Activate? Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, ignition. Oh, no, another one messed up. Shut down. It's not gonna be that easy, is it? Okay, activate engine. Ignition. Okay, now we've got all three. Launch. It's got a lot of thrust weight ratio because of the boosters now, so we have to turn pretty quickly. These engines sort of have a cheapy... sort of Raptor vibe. Smaller, of course. So the core tank has this additional tank up here in order to extend its time. Yeah, one downside to these engines is I don't believe they throttle. So... Yeah, they do not throttle. So maybe not so much the basis of a recovery launch system. Well, now those were more vigorous than I needed them to be, but that's fine. Oh, but they did impart a roll on this, which we can no longer stop on this stage. Next stage we have RCS, so that's possible. And separation. We also separated the fairings, but that's probably the best time to do it, actually, when we have the minimum amount of thrust. Okay, RCS, please. Stop the roll. Alright. Um... Cannot deploy antenna while stowed. Well, we probably aren't stowed. <laughs> um, so, let me just see. Well, we can deploy that one. That one's already deployed. That's fine. Okay, it looks like... Um, oh, that, well, that one's sort of got a clipped-in situation. Okay, I understand that. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was a tank on this side of the photon stage that isn't on the other side, and it doesn't like that. That's fine. Okay, that's 299 by 140, uh, sorry, 249, and we've got 4,000 meters per second left according to this indication. That should be enough to transfer to Venus. Let's take a look. Of course, we still have the nearly 2,000 in the photon stage, plus more than I expected in the probe itself. It looks good. Okay, it's turning, and let's check on comms. We seem to have aligned to the geostationary satellite as well as to some of the moonsats, so we should be okay. Okay, settling the fuel down just in case. And ignition. Well, shutting it down on time is going to be a little bit interesting. High thrust weight ratio here. And we're on escape. 
And shut down. 2.6 off. We could have the stage tag along a bit, but I don't think we want to. It looks like we already have an encounter. That's good. Okay, well, yeah, let's just see what decoupling can do for us. So, we've got an encounter. Decouple. And RCS. Uh, oh, it doesn't have RCS to face that way. Right. Um, why don't we just activate the RCS on top there? We did find out that it had extra. I'm not going to have uh, Smart ASS do anything, because it'll probably overdo it. Well, so I have a neat little package here. Uh, too much. Uh, we'll correct that when we get there, I think. Let's just make sure there is a node when we get there. It is on the outside portion of Venus, so... In theory, it should be facing Earth at that point, at its periapsis point, so we should have communication in theory. Anyway, let me put that alarm in. So, this is okay. I, I don't think we'll launch the other probe. We might be able to use it for, like, Mars or something. Which is sort of coming up. We don't have a contract for Mars yet, but potentially, potentially we could try it out for Mars. Okay, now it is recharging. Okay. All right, I'll take that for now. Okay. Yes, it is on its way. We'll pay attention to it in a little bit, but let me take a look at Mars contracts, and could this have the kind of range that we need for Mars? I don't know. Parachute probably needs to be reconfigured, but overall, well, we can always test it out and see. I mean, it seems like we'd be overdoing it to send it on a Mars flyby. Because it can enter and potentially land. But that's what we've got. We might as well try it out like that. We will be overshooting the mark a little bit. There's nothing else about, like, putting a satellite in orbit around Mars or anything like that. Uncrewed Venus landing is worth a lot. I didn't want to pick it up just yet until we verified that we could do it. And again, it is going to hang out there. We're not going to lose it or anything. Lots of rescue contracts. In theory, we can pick those up with the links, it's got spare seats, but nobody can get in right now. <laughs> right. Uh, right now, nobody can get into the links per se. They, uh, if we have the station version, if we put up a station, the station can rendezvous with them and they can get into the station, and then the links could bring them down. That's pretty long duration, but I don't know what kind of orbits they're in because. Some of them are one star, some of them are two star, some of them are three star. I'm going to venture to say that the one star ones might be in a nicer orbit, but then would that nicer orbit be equatorial? Because, you know, Kerbin and all. That, you know, equatorial would not be good for us. So I don't know what kind of nice orbit they're thinking of. That's a lot of Kerbals, though. Let's get, let's pick up the Milden Kerman one. Let me just see where Milden Kerman is. Milden is just outside the atmosphere. Oh, not even outside the atmosphere. It's 115 kilometers periapsis, 200 kilometer apoapsis. I hope Milden doesn't like automatically get destroyed. I think you have to be below 30 kilometers or something like that for it to automatically get rid of you. But that's going to be a tough rendezvous. Well, we're not going to rush on Milden. We've got some time on that. So I'll give that some thought as to how we're going to approach that. I think I would like some of the tougher contracts if that means they're in higher orbits. 
The low orbit is actually the worst. So, okay, we're, we're gonna try and send the other photon thing over to Mars. Wow, the Lynx is already built too. That's surprising, I thought it would take longer. Hope it's all- well, alright. First of all, let me edit the photon. And I just wanna make sure the parachute is Mars appropriate. So, Mars triple shoot. We want Kevlar. Can we get a touchdown speed of six? It says succeeded. It thinks that six can be done. So, okay. Well, if it thinks so. It's actually a lot heavier now, that parachute. I can tell because the Delta V has gone down. I think I want additional downward facing thrusters. That was inconvenient on the last launch. Alright, that's good enough for me. 20 hours. Still good. As long as it's not a few days, that is okay. Okay, rolling out the photon. And I want to edit the links and add that docking port and the escape system. Coupling... NASA docking system. Well, I think we'll standardize to that. They all cost the same. We'll go like that to make sure its colliders don't interfere with the colliders of the aero, uh, aero cap. And I had subassembled my launch escape system. Sort of like that. And there's a decoupler there. And then we are using these Aerojet ones that are based on a stock SRB, I think. Should work. I mean, I think it gives about 4 Gs to it, which is not much, but it'll be enough as long as we shut down the engines appropriately down here. So, yep, two boosters. Got 10,334, a healthy sea level thrust weight ratio. In fact, we could lose one engine and it'll still be okay. I hope we're getting data units on these darn things with the failures last time. At least we can relight them. All right. Saving these edits. Okay, let's see how engine ignition goes this time. Throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. Looks like we have all three here. And launch. And all that thrust weight ratio. Okay, everything looking nominal. Sort of aimed high here again, but that's good for comms anyway. And booster set. Um, looks like one of the little uh, SRBs that we're using as Separatrons failed. Which is fine. <laughs> not, not a big deal in this case. And separation and ignition. And RCS to stop the roll. Okay, and shut down 309 by 265. We have a little bit less delta V, uh, probably again because the parachute's heavier. So let's see about Mars. Okay, we have a transfer. It'll take a while. Wow, it takes 421 days to get there? No, that's, uh, is that a subsequent encounter? I mean, yeah, I guess. That's sure the long way around, huh? Not the most homany homan transfer, but it saves us a mid-course correction, it looks like, because otherwise we'd probably have to do a mid-course correction because of where the descending node is. So we'll take it. I mean, we're not in a rush per se. Well, the Mars flyby contract is only 605 days, but still it'll work out as long as we hit it. Okay. So, time warping. Alright, so it's turning to the node and we are checking our comms. Uh, looks fine to me. Uh, we once again have the geostationary satellite overhead. We've got various surface locations that we're communicating through as well. Okay, selling fuel down. 
And burn. And the engine has lit again. Does have an ignition failure rate of nearly 2%. We continue to collect data. Okay, we are on escape, switching to kill rotation. And... Okay, 5.7 left. Uh, let's see what it looks like on the Mars end here. I think the RCS can handle it. Okay, there we go, but at least need a tight flyby here. We would like some science, of course. Separation. That should be fine for now. We can correct once we get into Mars SOI. Just make sure we are properly clear and recharging. That's probably a little bit better. Yes, that would leave us recharging. Let's get persistent rotation on that. Okay, so this is on its way to Mars. It's a little bit loose right now, but we have plenty of Delta V in the stage. Fix that. And also our current periapsis is low enough that it would still fulfill the contract. So if we take a look, Mars flyby below 20,000 kilometers, and that is below 20,000 kilometers. So that is okay. And we will meet up with it once it gets into Mars SOI. So now, I think we should just focus on the... Well, I might get the docking target for the Lynx ready. And the docking tar target might also be what rendezvous with the rescuees. So we want to put some Delta V on that as well. But it won't be as heavy as the Lynx itself is. Okay, so this will be our docking target, which I have named Airlock 1. It is the Lynx spacecraft without the shell, no parachutes, uh, no aero cap, of course, and no launch escape system. RCS ports, yes, but uh, no fuel for its own RCS ports. We're just using the MH and Mon 3 ones. And we still have the engines. We have one docking port on top and one on the bottom for further expansions. Lots of Delta V because this tank's been expanded but we still are underutilizing it because we don't want to overburden the launch vehicle. I mean, there's an argument to be made that maybe we want to have a launch escape system because it's such an expensive payload. So, comms. Let's get the retractable parabolic antenna for once. Well, but it's only direct. In stock, it's a relay antenna. Okay, so that will be our docking target. It still takes a long time to build, but it's not as bad as the full pod. It's got, as you can see, I put 28 days of supplies for three crew, but that means that we, if we rescue some Kerbal with this, we can't wait around too long before picking them up. Certainly not the 300 days it takes to build one of these things, so gotta keep that in mind. <laughs> it's a little bit awkward. It's a little bit awkward on there. Probably would just go into a fairing altogether instead of just sticking out like that. Um, you know what? Let's do that. Okay, so airlock one, and we will build it. Okay, our Venus mission is approaching Venus here. Looks like there is communication with it. The probe should get into the atmosphere. The orbiter does not want to, so... Just going to leave this like that. And... We focus on Venus, double check its... Atmospheric height. We're at 145 kilometers is the height. So, okay, node. So that would be safe for the orbiter. And we'll wait a little bit longer before separating off the lander, but it doesn't look like this is the best way to go if you want comms. 
the line is going back that away. We actually want to be on the other side of Venus. So wrong way. You know what? In this case, maybe we should just use the engine. Okay, whoa, 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 that's too much. So that should be, well, okay, it might not be safer for comms at all. We really need this to get into orbit to facilitate the comms long term. Let's see if it can. Yep, yeah, it can. But we'll have to maybe do that early, let's see. Not as e well, no, we end up dipping in the atmosphere like that. Uh, we have to somehow pay attention to everything at once. Uh, let's say we do it early. But add a little bit of radial to it. Okay, so maybe we'll try this maneuver. To capture, but without the probe. Okay, at this point I'm going to separate off the probe. I'm going to arm its parachute. And there's Venus. And separate. Whoa, that's a lot of force. And our little antennae are not working. Why is that? Oh, uh, well, we've got relay dishes. We've got that, that have been resolved. Well, as long as it keeps puffing like this, it'll actually push it into the atmosphere. I'm just going to let it keep doing that. I don't... These whip antennas should have been able to communicate with that. But I guess I'm not quite understanding properly how these communication things work. We certainly have comms on this, and lots of Delta V now that that's off of it. So on this, we can get into orbit. We'll have a Venus orbiter. Which might help for things later on. Its relay capabilities are not good enough. That let, let's go back over to the other thing. It seems to be going in much faster than I thought it was. This is sneaky though. This is definitely taking advantage of Mech Jeb here. What I'm doing is I'm just making sure it only fires when it's pointed in roughly the right direction where these the predominant number of RCS ports will be pointing in the correct way to push us into Venus. Well we won't be able to get the science anyway so whatever I do here it does have I, I should have just extended the real antenna I thought I would do that on the surface or something but it looks like that would have been necessary right now. Okay Time to do the capture burn with the orbiter, though. Okay, we have captured. Just wants to get into a somewhat lower orbit. Okay, well, that'll do for now. Let's see about that little probe, which probably will die soon. Periapsis is 48 kilometers, so that's not great. And sudden effects. Oh dear. Oh, much cheese. Oh, actually it goes down. Uh, now it's going up again. More than 15. Ablation is happening. It looks like it's gonna survive though. What was that? 47 G's. 47 G's. Well, we'll land something on Venus. It's just that we're not going to fill the contract because of it, because that requires transmitting something from the surface. There isn't enough time warp for this. 
Yeah, I, I don't think we needed a parachute. What we need is a better antenna that can stay open with the pressures being what they are. I mean, we might need a little bit of parachute. Oh, uh, the parachute got destroyed anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's skip the par I should have probably come out of his warp. Maybe it would have survived, maybe not. I selected a Venus compatible parachute, but apparently not right. Okay, coming out of Fizz Warp to see if it can survive 12 meters per second. It's dodgy. Oh, it's getting. Uh, the antennae are getting hot too. Oop. Well, the heat shield went, but everything else is still intact. But we can't really do anything with it. And it's rolling. <laughs> okay, okay, it stopped. Well, something sit down, or has it? Something has gotten to the surface of Venus. The antennae are really hot. But we're not gonna get any credit for this. We'll we'll get this done somehow, but we may need some better antennae. Let's check the R and D building to see where we get those. Precision engineering has this parabolic antenna. With the level two DSN, it's got twenty two million kilometers. But uh, right now we will I mean we would have to also upgrade the R and D building. I don't think we're going to be ready for Venus missions for a while. We'll need a better R and D building. Of course, if you want to, you can, or we wanted to, we could do a deal with these guys. Uh, though I don't have the parts, I would have to get a different mod, but uh, if we had, like, say, Raider Nix mods or FASA or something like that, then, oh, yeah, then we could probably have some probes that could survive Venus and land. Especially, I suppose, in the Russian department. <laughs> or Soviet department. There would probably be something up there that could do the trick. But right now I do not have those mods. So we do not until we get to... So that's the benefit of maybe unlocking those. But those will be more costly than your own developed stuff. But yeah, for now we'll have to wait on uh, the portion that goes into the atmosphere of Venus. Or I mean, Mars, I don't know. Maybe the little antenna won't snap off of our probe head into Mars. Let's just see. Let's just do that part now. Taking a look at communications, uh, it's a little bit tenuous right now. Because of this really, really long trip, maybe Earth will come around again. But we're currently on the opposite side. I don't think we're going to have comms. Uh... We'll still have done the flyby, but I don't think we're going to get comms back. Yeah, we're, uh, until we get the R&D upgrade, we're basically limited to Earth uh, to a large extent. There are some minor things we can do, uh, assuming we're developing our own parts and not using those from other manufacturers. We, we are somewhat limited until we get the R&D upgrade. If we had made a quicker transfer to Mars, we might have been able to keep communication, but this was like a 400-day transfer. Yeah, no comms. It was a long shot anyway. But we just need to get within the... Oh, we do have to collect science. Gosh darn it. Why did I miss that? Hmm... Eventually, in solar orbit, it'll get back into comms with Earth, but then we do have Delta V to make a correction and everything. Well, there's Mars. But at this point, I'm officially banning myself from interplanetary missions for the time being. <laughs> so, yeah, unless I add an antenna to the tech tree, I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we just have people wait until they get to 
the R&D building unlock and get to that one technology which would unlock the parabolic antenna that can have better... I mean, I don't know if it has better range than what we've got on here right now, but at least it would survive an atmosphere. Should we wait until that, or do I need to develop more antennae, basically? Is the question. Larger ones than the little CubeSat ones. Airlock 1 is complete. Next time, we are going to try that business and the whole docking thing. We're going to fail the flyby contract, though. Of course, if the antennae are combinable, I guess we could just porcupine it. 550,000. Well, that's a hefty failure. Uh, well, we'll see. Let's, uh, let's pick up some contracts to soften that blow, shall we? So next time, we've already built this stuff. We need to do a rendezvous. Where is that? First docking. 225,000. We better get it done, because the failure is, like, humongous. So we'll try first docking. Oh, okay, first spacewalk. First docking and first spacewalk. Basically, cross your fingers. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.